by more people than any other network. ABC. Now, from News Channel 5, Cleveland's live 24 hour news source continues. I'm Mona Baird. Here's the latest. A Mansfield convict, Thomas Phelan, says he inherited a million dollars from his parents. He wants to give all of it to some friends, a group of nuns from Cincinnati. And a 59 year old man is attacked by a pack of dogs at an east side Cleveland park. Dog wardens have been working overtime to get most of them captured. Join us in an hour for News Channel 5 at 11. Perkins presents Dinner with No Reservations. Try our new savory stuffed pork chop or our new hibachi chicken. A juicy chop filled with country stuffing and served with potato pancakes. Or a specially marinated chicken breast over rice pilaf with baby carrots. Both so delicious you can play it either way with no reservations at all. Perkins, breakfast, dinner, and everything in between. It was bound to happen. Joel Hyatt has launched the distorted negative attacks. Sure, I've made some mistakes, but I've also learned from them. Mr. Hyatt's distortions are precisely the old-style politics he claims to be against. So I'm going to keep talking about what I'm for. Radically changing welfare, attacking wasteful government spending, and making life tougher on the criminals. So when you hear the negatives, remember, they say a lot more about Joel Hyatt than about Mike DeWine. Discover the daytime liquid breakthrough from Lancôme, Paris. Bienfe Total. In French, it means total well-being. An enzyme-activated formula with triple daytime benefits. Continuous hydration all day. Radiant, healthy-looking skin. Indoor-outdoor SPF 15 protection and vitamin E antioxidants. For the total well-being of your skin. Lancôme, Paris. Parisian Essentials. Your free gift with any 1750 Lancôme purchase. Now at Kaufman's. Actor Martin Landau, tomorrow, live on 5. October 20th, 1994. Tonight, she is the wife of a man called the most deadly spy in U.S. history. Once said to be hiding behind dark glasses, a big house, and their wealth. Now she's in jail. It was blood money you were spending. Tonight, the question. After more than six years of marriage, what would you do if you found out your husband, the father of your child, was a traitor? For the first time on television, Rosario Ames breaks her silence. Did you say to him, are you crazy? You've got to stop? A primetime investigation. How safe is your child's school bus? The doorway had filled up with people trying to get out on the pack, and there was arms and legs every which way trying to get out. This Kentucky crash killed 27 people. Could those deaths have been prevented? Putting a fuel tank that close to the front exit is just unbelievably wrong. We'll show you the three key areas of a school bus that critics say can be fatal. There are children being put on the exact same bus in which your daughter burned to death this very day. This guy has been given the toughest job in the Western Hemisphere. The goal is to establish a professional police force uh, made up of Haitians to police Haiti. He's a New York City cop, set to turn men who were called thugs into proud defenders of the law. Can Raymond Kelly pull it off? First, we were shocked to learn he had committed adultery. Then we heard she did it too. It's a battle for public loyalty in the War of the Windsor. Will it ever end? From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace, Judd Rose, Sylvia Chase, John Quinones, and Rene Poussin, this is Prime Time. Good evening. First up tonight, a question of crime and punishment. Tonight, Aldrich Ames, the CIA officer and spy, is sitting in a jail serving his life sentence for selling secrets to the Soviets. His wife is also in jail. She signed a plea agreement and has been portrayed as his full partner in crime. But before you make up your mind, listen to what the prosecutor says the facts are with respect to her. Again, it's their document released today. They say she never transmitted secrets, never knew what her husband was giving, and only knew a few details of the crime which she learned in the closing stages, she says, the last 18 months. So what did she know and what should her punishment be? 
Tonight, on the eve of her sentencing, the woman called the spy from Bogota talks about herself and the husband she really didn't know. In the photographs and the stories, Rosario Ames was labeled a woman spinning a deadly web of intrigue. The mother, who was really a South American Matahari, helping her husband, Aldrich Ames, the patrician CIA agent, sell his secrets and sacrifice lives. But the woman who walked in for our interview at the Alexandria, Virginia Detention Center was quiet, nervous, saying she just wanted a chance to tell what really happened and how she feels now about the man she loved. I despise him, basically. I despise him for what he did, for what he did to his country, for what he did to me, to my family, to his son. Are you the Matahari who seduced this American diplomat and turned him into a spy? Absolutely not. No. 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 It didn't change anything for those 18 months. And that is what I'm here for, and that is what I've accepted having done. And I'm not happy with my choice, and I regret it, but there are reasons why it happened. Reasons, she says, and a question. She asks, what would you have done if you had a small child and more than six years into your marriage, six years after he started spying, you stumbled on a note to your husband and discovered he was a traitor. At some point, I came across a um, strange piece of paper tucked away in a wallet. I do remember that it spoke about some embassy, our embassy. I don't know whose embassy. And I also know that it talked about this in quote, I'm quoting something like the city where your mother-in-law lives. And that's what really worried me because what does my mother or what does Bogota for that matter have to do with Rick's job at all, you know? So I asked him about it when he came home. What did he say? Very little, but enough to put me here, which is that he was working with the Soviets, for the Soviets. He never said anything about what he was giving them? No. You didn't ask? No. She says she faced an impossible choice. Did you think about turning him in? Not really. I didn't, I didn't know. I thought of leaving constantly, but turning him in was something that I didn't think I could do. I didn't know. I didn't even know. Most people think that in your situation, they would say, I will not be associated with this in any way. Whatever the danger to them. It's easy to talk when you're not in it, to, to judge a situation when you're not caught up in it. Did you say to him, are you crazy? Are you mad? You've got to stop? I did. I did. I told him that was one thing that I insisted on. I told him you have to stop. Whatever it is, you have to stop. You have to stop. And he promised he would. And then I went into a period of just, I guess, following a very Rick-like behavior, trying to pretend that if I didn't think about it, it wasn't there. And when she did think about it, she says he fed her fear. He told me that, that the Russians had asked him for pictures of Paul and of myself. He also told me, now that you know, you know, I mean, you're in danger. You know, what if, what if they think you're going to talk? Why didn't you pick up and leave? I, I felt that I was totally trapped. And I was terrified. I know it was the stupidest mistake anybody could have ever made. I will never live enough to regret it. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, am I not? But, but that's the way it was. To understand how Rosario Ames came to this moment, you must begin at the beginning. Her father, a respected mathematician and senator in Bogota, Colombia. Her mother, a highly connected professor of literature and poetry. Their daughter, Rosario, would become the most brilliant student at the university, speaking six languages, studying rarefied questions of philosophy while living at home. I grew up in a very loving, sheltered, bookish world. And when Rosario Ames decided to leave here, Bogota, Colombia, it was because a government official urged her to try diplomacy and not just any government official, the president of the country. So in 1982, she headed off to Mexico City and the Colombian Embassy, where she would become cultural attache 
and for the first time at the age of 30, live on her own. How sophisticated were you about the world, about men? About men, not very. Not very. Rick Ames, how did you meet him? The B Diplomatic Association in Mexico City was very active, and they organized luncheons. And I met him at one of these lunches, I believe it was. She says they spent hours in cafes discussing literature and poetry. He was 11 years older than she, separated from his wife, calm, urbane. He said he worked at the State Department. It would be two years before he confided that, in fact, he worked for the CIA and swore her to secrecy, a secret she kept to the end, telling no one. 